The emojis associated with the title might suggest to you the type of affected software. The vulnerability is an integer overflow in the secure real-time protocol implementation in WhatsApp. The, the vulnerability was discovered in the wild for spy, spyware delivery. There are unclear statements regarding the idea that it was attempted to be used to exploit a lawyer in the wild. Senior researchers at Citizen Lab said that the attack could have the attack had failed and there is a strong suspicion that the victim's phone was targeted. They also claim to believe that the, that the measures WhatsApp had put in place in the last several days prevented the attacks from being successful. The zero day was allegedly leveraged to deploy NSO's Pegasus software as spyware on victim devices. More clarity and information was released in October 2019 when WhatsApp attributed the attacks to NSA Group and filed claims and lawsuits referenced in five and six. References five and six. Well, you must know what WhatsApp is, but if you don't, WhatsApp is a text and voice mobile app that was acquired by Facebook. The voice capability is achieved via voice over IP. Voice over IP is achieved via protocols running on top of IP like RTP control protocol. We're going to do this in sort of a reverse manner, starting with the fix, and then we go back in detail to try to understand what was the vulnerability here. Keep in mind that multiple vulnerabilities were likely patched for this particular zero-day attack, and given that the detailed information, the, the details or information regarding this vulnerability is scanty, we don't have much context around the code snippets that will be shown. This is the first uh, snippet uh, from Checkpoint Research. And it basically points out that there was an added size check in one of the major RTCP handler functions. I would like to like take this opportunity to shout out to Citizen Lab, Checkpoint Research, and Google Project Zero, and every other research firm or researcher that took a look at this vulnerability when it was still fresh off the news. As mentioned earlier, we do not have surrounding code or pseudocode to show much more context around this. Um, and we didn't think it was what going to get. So once again, um, showing another patch, the highlighted segment showing that there was a length argument was verified against a maximum value of hex 5C8. And this is the second size check. So we're still looking at the patched code. We can also see that the verification occurred before a uh, mem copy call. Presumably, this could hint a heap of a flow in the old code if it had unsanitized acid length. This is the second snippet, which basically uh, illustrates that some part of the code was removed. Um, for further information, refer to the reference at the bottom left corner of the, of the slide. But essentially what we observe here is that there is an A size parameter, um, A size variable, and this variable is validated to be of certain size. If the size is not complete, so if, there's, if the condition fails, then not enough space for, for buffer bus packet of length, packets error or log will be written. However, from the mathematical calculation, it is possible that an integer overflow or underflow could cause the validation to be bypassed, leading to A size being used incorrectly in the subsequent code as a mem copy size parameter. So once again, we check out the, the unpatched code. Uh, to what's basically in this snippet, we see that the size parameter is first enters in as a signed integer and then eventually navigates its way down to a parameter passed to memcopy, which expects an unsigned integer. Um, but then we can see that there is no validation whatsoever performed on the size length variable, but as, as our highlight shows, it is indeed attacker controlled. And then we can see then the updated fix that the size was then validated against 0x5c8. Just showing the fix then and the comparison side by side from the different sources, we can see the added packet length field validation and the validation just prior to the mem copy operation. 
Once again, I did point out earlier that some of the details surrounding this particular vulnerability are a little bit unknown and scarce, but if you're interested in additional readings and references, uh, feel free to check out the research by Checkpoint, Zipperium, and uh, I believe Maddie Stone did put out a, a, a video recording from one of the conferences um, where these, these different research teams attempt to explore this vulnerability further.